Brandon Cooks has been ruled out for the Cowboys game against the Pittsburgh Steelers with a knee infection. That infection is stemming from an injury that he suffered against the New York Giants on Thursday night football, which means the wide receiver room is down to CeeDee Lamb, Jalen Tolbert, Jalen Brooks, and Ryan Flournoy. On Twitter, I have been pleading for the Cowboys to make Flournoy active for game day. I even made a video about it a few weeks ago because honestly, this wide receiver room needed and still needs help. And maybe Flournoy brings that to the table in week five against the Steelers. So let's talk about it. The Cowboys have been rolling with five wide receivers active and dressed on game day, which has left Ryan Flournoy inactive and not in uniform. He's yet to dress for a game, which means he still hasn't played a single snap for the Cowboys in his rookie season. Now with the Brandon Cooks injury, he's going to get his chance. With Cooks out, they have no choice but to make him active, which is a double-edged sword because I would have liked for him to be active without an injury. So I guess just be careful what you wish for. Don't get me wrong, I'm still excited to see him play, and I hope that this is the start of him being active every week. I and a bunch of other people were really impressed with what he did in the preseason. He had nine catches on 12 targets for 61 yards and two touchdowns. According to PFF, Cowboys quarterbacks had a passer rating of 125.3 when targeting him in the preseason. And I know, the preseason is not something that you can really rely on when it comes to production in the regular season, but it's still a confidence boost to me that he's a good football player. Now, his performances in those weeks certainly wasn't perfect, and some mistakes he made early might have kept him inactive up to this point in the year. He had a drop and a fumble in the first game that obviously bothered fans and coaches. It's hard, especially for a rookie trying to gain trust with an organization, with a coaching staff. So that certainly hasn't helped his case getting on the field. And this is what Flournoy had to say about what he learned from that game. Uh, I learned from the first preseason game. As y'all can see, I dropped the pass, fumbled, and that was because my emotions was high and I wanted to prove and not play. So I was trying to prove like I'm a small school guy. I got a lot to prove, but even Brandon Cooks and Dak told me after that game, just go out there and play football, and as y'all can see, the next two games, I felt like I balled, and you know, I wasn't out there doing stuff. I was out there playing football, playing freely. Even though Flournoy isn't from a big-time college program, he still played a lot of football and been really productive. He was a bit of an older prospect coming out of the draft, so he has more experience than your typical rookie. And what gets me hype about Flournoy's potential on this team is his athleticism. He ranked 11th at the Combine among wide receivers in terms of testing numbers, and it shows up on the field. His frame is your typical X wide receiver. He's explosive off the line of scrimmage. He has good long speed, and he has the strength to win on contested catches above the rim. It showed up in the preseason, but will it show up in the regular season? To answer that question, I'm gonna say eventually. I'm curious on how much the Cowboys are gonna ask him to do in his rookie debut. I mean, they've kept him inactive over the first four weeks of the season, so it's not like they've been dying to get him out on the field. I mean, I and a bunch of other people have been wanting to see him active since week one, although I don't think it's going to be anything crazy. I do think he's going to get some snaps this week. Before we continue, I wanted to give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video, BetUS. Football, basketball, ice hockey, baseball, whatever you need, BetUS has you covered. My favorite part is that you can filter by props, conferences, divisions, playoff specials, anything that you want, it's right there at your fingertips. So head over to BetUS and get an awesome deal with the deposit bonus and start playing this Sunday. They have an awesome promotion right now where you get a 150% bonus on your first deposit and then 125% on your next two. And if you win, they have you covered with fast and easy payout. Thank you so much to BetUS for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back into it. Brandon Cooks has averaged around 54 snaps per game. 170 of his total snaps have been on the outside. As for his targets per game, Cooks has only had about five per week, give or take. That's not a ton of receiving production to replace, but someone is going to have to step up and fill in 54 snaps on offense. And honestly, 
I think that might be a combination of Tolbert, Turpin, Brooks, and Flournoy. Jalen Brooks only has 61 snaps as a receiver this year, and Turpin has just 49. Brooks and Turpin only have seven targets each this year. And how much Flournoy plays sometimes just comes down to coaches and what they feel comfortable with. Coaches can be way too scared to play rookies, especially late round picks, because if something doesn't go right, everybody's going to say, well, why are you relying on a sixth round rookie? so much? Why is he out there on the field? So I assume to at least start the game, they're going to try to get Tolbert and Brooks more involved. But with Cooks out, it could also move everyone in the wide receiver room up one spot. For example, Jalen Brooks has been the wide receiver four slash five. He's gotten around 15 snaps per game with about one to two targets each week. Tolbert would be wide receiver two, moving up a spot. Brooks would be wide receiver three. And then Flournoy is that four slash five guy with Turpin mixing in there as well. So maybe that's what we should expect from Flournoy and this coaching staff. That seems like a reasonable plan that Mike McCarthy would go with. Now, I've been talking in the perspective of Flournoy getting snaps as a receiver, strictly pass plays for the most part but I could see him getting on the field as a blocker because I do think he's better than Jalen Brooks or Cavante Turpin as a blocker in the run game. So that's a way he could see more snaps in week five. Honestly, I'm always down for the unknowns of a rookie. I vote to put Flournoy out there, mix him in evenly with Brooks, Turpin, and whoever else they choose, and let's rock and roll. If he's playing well, if he's playing bad, make adjustments based on that. You can't be scared forever. None of these receivers have proven to be better than the next, so I vote to give Flournoy his chance now so you know what you have for later in the year if you face a long-term injury at wide receiver. Let's not waste any time here. I vote to see him play, throw in the ball a couple times. If you agree with me, comment Flournoy down below in the comments. I want to see how many Flournoy comments we can get on this video, and then I'll just, you know, I'll send it in an email to Mike McCarthy later today. But that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I love you all, and I'll see you later this week.